So welcome to this video on flowcharts, pseudocode and converting that into its Python equivalent. So flowcharts are used in a lot of programming environments to make it easy for the programmer to trace the values through the program. So they'll start with something like a terminator like this, like the start of the program. Um, this might be a section of a bigger program or it might be the entire system at GCSE. The, um, the examples are going to be really small so you don't, you know, you won't have too many things going on. It'll be quite easy to follow. So all four tests start with a start terminator and an end terminator and then uh, everything else is going to flow down in the least resistance possible to get to the end of the task you're doing. So I'm doing this off the top of my head, so if I make a mistake, point it out. Um, but we need a scenario. The scenario is going to be, we're going to flip a coin 10 times, and we are just going to count how many times that has been um, flipped, or that side had been flipped. So that's a, um, a scenario. So we have to now think about how we get that into a flow chart. So the exam question could be, uh, Sally decides to create a program seeing if flipping a coin is 50-50. Uh, write the program or the flowchart to simulate a program which will flip a coin 10 times and output the result. That's what she's done. So if you want to wind that back and listen to my rambling, basically it's a count how many times as the tails has been flipped game. Right, so let's think about this logically. Like I said, top of my head, I'm going to do it as if I got the exam paper now. It's 17.24. I don't want this video going on longer than about 10 minutes. Let's go. Right, so the first thing I need to do is put this action into a loop. I need to flip this thing 10 times. So I need to also think about how I'm going to store heads and tails so storing variables in a flowchart is quite simply this uh, it's a square rectangle called a process i'm going to use these i don't think i need more than two otherwise i'm copying and pasting so i am going to store two variables one's going to be called tails equals zero and one's going to be called heads equals zero watch out for powerpoint because sometimes it capitalizes your letters Right, so that's that. I've set two variables to keep track of how many heads and how many tails we've got at the start of the game, and zero. Right, now I want it to do something ten times. Now this can be done with this. I want it to do the following in this flowchart, this section, ten times. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to simply write in here, repeat ten times. So the following thing is going to be repeated ten times. What's going to be repeated ten times? Well, we're going to flip a coin. Flipping a coin is an input into the system. I need to flip a coin into the system, uh, flip a coin, read it, and then do something with it. So that is going to be an input. Input and output are the same symbol. So you've got to be careful, but it's clear to see whether it's an input and output. So we're going to flip the coin. Flip coin. Simple as that. Right. So we're going to repeat this next bit ten times. So after we flip the coin. We need to make a decision again. We need to check if it's heads or tails. So I'm going to do this, heads. If it's heads, if that's true, I'm going to put a T for this side. Now I could just make a little box where I'm, see I don't want to be messing around with this. So if it's true, we're going to come out to this side. So if it's true, we're going to do something. And if it's false, we're going to do that. And then when that's done, we are going to print, when it's done it 10 times, we're going to see which one won. So that's going to be that. So we're going to print, and then your variables used at the top, tails and heads. Print tails and heads. Um, I don't need anything fancy. I just want to print the accumulation of this. So we've done, repeat this 10 times. Go and keep going around and around. So if this is, if it's heads, if it's heads, we're going to go, uh, heads plus equals one and if it's tails it's going to be tails plus equals one now remember powerpoint doing it this way will capitalize your things 
And now I just need to put in my flow lines. So if I go to insert and I go to shapes and I go to lines, I'm going to draw a line straight from here, straight through to this, and try to get it to go through the middle of all my things. This should snap. Oops. This is why this is existing flow charts. It should snap really nice. These should snap to the lines. And then I'm going to draw a line coming out into this. I'm going to draw a line coming out of this. Back into the flow chart. I should have done a curve line then, but I'm just going to make this quick. There you go. Um, and what are we repeating 10 times? We're going to go um, back into your lines. We're going to go repeat this section 10 times. And hopefully this will line up dead nice for us. And there we go. So what will happen is, uh, repeat this section 10 times, and then when it's done it 10 times, the last time it does it, the last time it either does this, or it does this, it's going to do this. So that's your flow chart for that simple um, repeti uh, repetitive process. So let's convert this now to code, and I'll do also pseudo code with it. So I'll do all my pseudo code in comments, and I'll do all my real code in uh, in between the lines sort of thing. So I'll just put these in ready. So the pseudo code would be to start the program, and we are going to go tails. It's a, um, um, set to zero. That's what it would be in pseudo code. You do this backward pointing arrow uh, to the variable, and in Python we know we just have to do that tails equals zero. Uh, then we're going to do the same thing for heads, so it will be heads let's set to zero, and this will be heads equals zero. So let me do type those two lines done. Oh no, it doesn't matter about white space. I don't like doing white space because you know you just want to make the variable and then forget about it until you're using it. Right, the next thing it says is repeat ten times. Now I know that this is a for loop, so it'll be four. Um, or repeat if it's pseudocode, repeat 10 times. You can actually write that, um, but we know in programming that's going to be 4i in range 10. That's going to be the difference. So for, for, for i in range 10 times, and then we have to flip a coin. So to flip a coin and to create a coin, we're going to have to import random. Now you don't have to do this in pseudocode. You don't have to say you've got to import random. You don't really need to. You can just say generate random number. So import random, and we are going to create a random number here with the right indent. So R and D equals random dot run range. And we can have heads or tails, so it's two values. I'll do the pseudocode for that. So, um, um, so you could do that random. So R and D, and that's going to be set to random one or uh, zero or one. I'm going to have something like that. That is pseudocode. That is quite fine. There are um, things you can follow from the exam boards but the whole idea of pseudocode is that a human can read it who doesn't know how to program because this if you didn't know anything about programming you would never guess to write that exact line and that's what pseudocode's for i think as a human we can understand set this variable to a random number it's either zero or it's one it's totally it, it, that should be fine uh, most people, though, they just type out the code um, for pseudocode now because Python is very high level in terms of its development. Uh, anyway, so we've created the flip coin, and now we have to check if it's heads or tails, 
and I've just said it if it's heads if it's tail so if my um, if R and D is equal to zero we are going to say that's heads so heads like it says here plus equals one else it wasn't zero it must have been the other number we could have which was one so else tails plus equals one and you're here now it's going to do that ten times and then when it's done it ten times it's going to come out of the loop so along the same side as this loop now um, it's going to print and we're just going to print tails I'm going to print heads simple as that so let's do the pseudo code for this so you would write if R and D or oh, let me um, put a hashtag in if R and D is equal whoops um, zero then this is all you do in pseudo code so if R and D is because uh, we set it here is equal to zero then we're going to go now in zero code I do this I go heads equals oh well you don't use equals in pseudo code sorry uh, heads plus one you do it that way because in pseudo code in pro Python programming we can shorthand it like this but when you're doing pseudo code you might have to say heads again and then plus one to it and then I can copy that and put that in for the tails so I need to obviously hashtag an else. When you're doing pseudo code for um, if and else, you've got to put it in capitals. Usually that's the the um, standard. So this is tails. And then when you've started an if statement in pseudo code, you should end the if like that. If you're doing pseudo code, so if you can see through all of the grey writing, I have written the actual code in pseudo code, and it looks very similar anyway. So either way, whichever way you want to do it, you'll still get the match. And then um, output, you normally use the word output, um, tails, heads. It kind of looks the same on the last bit. And I think that'll do it. So let's run it. So we get an error. Oh, five, five. So we didn't get an error. It just runs straight away. So this program, if it's working properly and there's no logic errors, uh, it was 50 50 let's run it again well at that time it was more heads than it was tails I had tails than it was heads because I'm printing it tails first next one five five next one four six three seven six four five five so now we can run the test by is flipping a coin 50 50 now we're only flipping it ten times let's do it a thousand times and see what actually happens so it's pretty 50 50 and it's pretty damn close so let's do it again yeah, it's pretty damn close. Let's do it again. Can we get 500, 500? Can we? I can waste all day doing this. Um, but it's pretty close. It's very, very close, isn't it? Right, so that's um, how you create a flow chart. Convert it to its equivalent pseudocode. And then into its actual runnable Python code. If you've got any problems with this, just come and see me.